one more time. What makes a purpose-driven organization? And how do you know if you have one? The glasses are a little much, aren't they? Let's talk about purpose. Specifically, let's talk about being a purpose-driven organization. I mean, we know, we've known this for probably 20 years, we've believed the researchers for maybe the last five to 10, that purpose-driven organizations outperform their competitors, they outperform the industry, that people want a sense of meaning from their work, that people want to derive a sense of true value that they're creating. People want a sense of purpose and they want it from more than just their personal lives. They want it at work as well. And so a lot of organizations have responded by trying to migrate their organization to a truly purpose-driven organization. But I thought it'd be helpful to talk about what a purpose-driven organization is not so that we can get an idea of what makes a truly purpose-driven organization. So today I wanna to share four misconceptions about purpose-driven organizations. Things we believe would make uh, employees feel a sense of purpose, but may not work out the way that we hoped. The first, we should talk about the sunglasses. The first misconception is that a purpose-driven organization sort of equals CSR, corporate social responsibility. And no one would say this outright. No one would just say, oh, well, if we just give a certain percentage to social causes, we suddenly become a purpose-driven organization. But if you look at the way organizations talk about what they do in terms of CSR, or you could just call them what they are often, PR campaigns, if you look at what they do, they really are trying to say that we uh, do good business by doing good. You don't, you, you just give a certain percentage of your profits to good causes. Your business model may actually be in contrast to some of those causes. Now, in contrast, there are organizations whose business models, the, the entire purpose around their organization is in and of itself almost a form of corporate social responsibility. One of my favorite examples is a Vancouver-based company named Pila. They made these sunglasses, among other things. They actually started as a company that makes cell phone cases. And the difference is they make things out of plastic that aren't plastic. In fact, they're made from pure organic materials. They found out how to take waste products from farming and turn them into a moldable plastic and have now been making products that are often highly disposable, like cell phone cases, like sunglasses that you forget where they are at the end of the summer and have found a way to make them biodegrade if they're composted within 10 years. Think about it. You get a new cell phone, uh, you switch out cases, it sits in a landfill for 10,000 years. You get a Pila case, by the way, and it'll biodegrade in 10 if you compost it. That's not corporate social responsibility, that's true purpose. If you ask anyone inside of Pila, what are you working for? They'll tell you the same thing. We're working for a waste-free future. But it's also not just about what people are working for in terms of a mission statement. That's actually the second misconception. Your purpose as an organization is bigger than your mission statement. You, you know, and I've talked about this before. Mission statements are actually a relatively terrible way to convey a sense of purpose to employees because we have a very one and done mentality around them, right? We send off the senior leaders, we send off a cross section of employees to some offsite where we pay a consultant $20,000 to come up with a glass plaque. By the way, if you wanna pay me $20,000 to come up with your glass plaque, I'll, I'll do it. I've run workshops on how to discover purpose before, but I won't let you stop at a mission statement because I know that a mission statement alone, it's gonna get put on the 10K, it's gonna, the plaque is gonna get put in the hallway of the organization or in the, like the very front in the entranceway, and it's promptly gonna be forgotten. My proof of this actually is the Hershey organization in a little bit different way. Hershey as an organization once had a terrible mission statement. They, they changed it, thankfully, but for a time their mission statement was undisputed marketplace leadership. That was it, that was what they put in the 10K and yeah, that might have helped inspire shareholders and that sort of thing, but it was pretty terrible. But after getting ridiculed, they, they changed it, but nothing really changed when they changed it, why? Because Hershey Foods as an organization's purpose is actually bigger than that. If you look on the back of pretty much any Hershey bar, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the same thing. You're gonna see something about the Milton Hershey School. The Milton Hershey School is a school for orphans, biological or uh, societal orphans, all funded, by the way, not from some CSR campaign from Hershey, not because they give a certain percentage of their profits, but because the school actually owns Hershey Foods. The school, the trust that funds the school is the majority shareholder of 
Hershey Foods. And so they could write whatever mission statement they want, but the employees, especially the employees in the home office, see the school across the way. It's in the same town. It's virtually across the street. They see that. They see the purpose. Sure can build a lot with a bar of chocolate, can't you? And the Hershey business model is great, it's fantastic, but it leads us to really the third misconception about purpose and being a purpose-driven organization. We know that it's not just CSR, we know that it's bigger than your mission statement, but it's also not necessarily your business model. You can give employees a sense of purpose through a variety of different causes that you are working for. When Alcoa, for example, they're the people that literally invented tinfoil. And I apologize, the tinfoil is really messing with the lighting that I have rigged up. Sorry about that. When Alcoa in the late 80s and through the entire of the 1990s was trying to turn the company around, Paul O'Neill, the CEO, the newly crowned CEO in charge of the organization, chose to make the purpose not shareholder value because they were owned by a trust like in the Hershey organization, but chose to make the purpose about safety. He declared that as a manufacturing organization, they were gonna become a zero accident company. Never been heard of in, in any manufacturing, let alone something like aluminum smelting. But he decided that that was their cause, that was their purpose. That was what employees internalized, the sense that we're all in this together and if people are getting injured, then we are failing our brothers and sisters. So let's pursue becoming a zero accident company. Now, non-ironically, a lot of good things happen by that same purpose that really helped the business model. I mean, how do you make a factory safer? You study the entire process and you make efficiencies. What happens when a factory is safer, it is able to run at higher rates because you don't have to stop the line every time there's an accident. So there are a variety of business benefits to that newfound sense of purpose, but it wasn't anything necessarily changing in the business model. It was driving people through a sense of purpose that was external to the business model, that was about taking care of each other and in the end provided a much better return on investment for all of the shareholders anyway. In the end, proved that they could continue to operate in that business model. But the purpose had nothing to do with business. The purpose had to do with safety and taking care of our brothers and sisters. Speaking of one more organization that is focused on taking care of our brothers and sisters, it's the WD-40 company. They make, I don't know if you ever used this, WD-40. The WD-40 company is a great example of the fourth and final misconception about purpose, which is that it's not necessarily what you sell. Yeah, it's great if you can come up with a product or service that is entirely waste-free and make your purpose that. But in the case of WD-40, I mean, they sell oil. It's a lubricant. They, they literally just sell an oil that makes stuff not squeak. But led by CEO Gary Ridge, WD-40 has been incredibly passionate about their purpose being each other. They literally use the term tribe and there are stories and artifacts about taking care of the tribe all over pretty much any office headquarters. If you ask people at WD-40, what are you working for? They're not trying to get more oil in the world to make door hinges less squeaky. That's just a really, really strong side benefit. But it's not what they're working for. What they're working for is to provide people with an organization that lets them thrive, that is supportive of them, an organization that is focused on us and taking care of each other, no matter what we sell. We just happen to sell WD-40. So how do you know when you actually are one of these purpose-driven organizations? How do you know when employees actually do feel a sense of purpose that inspires them and motivates them every day versus a mission statement that sounds good when you read it in the Ted K but nobody even remembers or versus a business model that's actually at odds with what your CSR slash PR campaigns say is the good that you provide in the world? How do you know? Well, for most leaders, I think there's actually a simple test that you can give. Do your people have a clear and concise answer to the question, what are we fighting for? What are we fighting for? What in the world are we working towards that will provide a better future or working against because if we don't solve it, it'll be a less bright future? Not who are we fighting? Who are we fighting for is a question about competitors and that actually very rarely motivates employees. What are we fighting for? What is our reason for existing and what is that thing that we've decided by existing and continuing to do business to take on? If your people can clearly and concisely answer that question, what are you fighting for? Then you have the seedbed, if not the entirety of a purpose-driven organization. And if you don't, there's probably one of these misconceptions that you're still believing. We'll see you next time.
Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we post episodes like this as often as we can. And if you really enjoyed it and you wanna go deeper, then check out our totally free course, Three Days to a More Motivated and Aligned Team. You can sign up for it at davidberkuscom slash three days. We'll see you there.